Welcome to our office of said evening prayer. On this day when the church remembers John Coleridge Patterson, the first Bishop of Melanesia and his companions martyred for their faith in 1871. A warm welcome to those of you joining us here in the choir at Chester Cathedral and to those of us joining at home online. If you're following the red books, our service will begin on page 155 and we will be saying Psalm 119, commencing at verse 33 through to verse 56, and that can be found on page 831. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make, make haste, haste to, to help, help us. us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence by the light of Christ, your living word. To spell the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praises throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. So turning to page 156. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So please be seated as we read the psalm, Psalm, one, uh, psalm 119, beginning at verse 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. And I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments. For therein is my delight. Incline my heart to your testimonies. And not to unjust gain. Turn away my eyes, lest they gaze on vanities. O oh, give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise. Which stands for all who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread. Because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. In your righteousness give me life. Let your faithful love come unto me, O Lord. Even your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I answer those who taunt me. For my trust is in your word. O oh, take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For my hope is in your judgments. So shall I always keep your law. I shall keep it for ever and ever. I will walk at liberty. Because I study your commandments. I will tell of your testimonies even before kings. I will not be ashamed. My delight shall be in your commandments. Which I have greatly loved. My hands will I lift up to your commandments which I love. And I will meditate on your statutes. Remember your word to your servant. On which you have built my hope. This is my comfort in my trouble that your promise gives me life. The proud have derided me cruelly, but I have not turned aside from your law. I have remembered your everlasting judgments, O Lord, and have been comforted. I am seized with indignation at the wicked, for they have forsaken your law. Your statutes have been like songs to me in the house of my pilgrimage. I have thought on your name in the night, O Lord, and so have I kept your law. These blessings have been mine, for I have kept your commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The first reading is from the first book of Kings, chapter 10 beginning at the first verse, the visit of the Queen of Sheba. 
When the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, fame due to the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she told him all that was on her mind. Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. When the queen of Sheba had observed all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his table, the seating of his officials, and the attendance of his servants, their clothing, his valets, and his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. So she said to the king, The report was true that I heard in my own land of your accomplishments and of your wisdom, but I did not believe the reports until I came and my own eyes had seen it. Not even half had been told me. Your wisdom and prosperity far surpassed the report that I had heard. Happy are your wives. Happy are these your servants who continually attend you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, who has delighted in you and set you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord loved Israel forever, he has made you king to execute justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, a great quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again did spices come in such quantity as that which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Moreover, the fleet of Hiram, which carried gold from Ophir, brought from Ophir a great quantity of almug wood and precious stones. From the Almug wood, the king made supports for the house of the Lord and for the king's house, lyres also and harps for the singers. No such Almug wood has come or been seen to this day. Meanwhile, King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba every desire that she expressed, as well as that he gave her out of Solomon's royal bounty. And she returned to her own land with her servants. The weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 666 talents of gold, besides that which came from the traders and from the business of the merchants and from all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the land. King Solomon made 200 large shields of beaten gold. 600 shekels of gold went into each large shield. He made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three minus of gold went into each shield and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. The king also made a great ivory throne and overlaid it with the finest gold. The throne had six steps. The top of the throne was rounded in the back, and on each side of the seat were armrests and two lions standing beside the armrests, while twelve lions were standing, one on each end of a step, on the six steps. Nothing like it was ever made in any kingdom. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was, not, it was not considered as anything in the days of Solomon. For the king had a fleet of ships at Tarshish, at sea with the fleet of Hiram. Once every three years, the fleet of ships of Tarshish used to come bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. Thus King Solomon excelled all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom. The whole earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put into his mind. Each one of them brought a present, objects of silver and gold, garments, weaponry, spices, horses and mules, so much year by year. He ends the Old Testament reading. A song of the blessed. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Our second reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, beginning at the first verse. After Paul and Silas had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three Sabbath days argued with them from the Scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to rise from the dead, and saying, This is the Messiah, Jesus, whom I am proclaiming to you. Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews became jealous and with the help of some ruffians in the marketplaces, they formed a mob and set the city in an uproar. While they were searching for Paul and Silas to bring them out to the assembly, they attacked Jason's house. When they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some believers before the city authorities, shouting, These people who have been turning the world upside down have come here also, and Jason has entertained them as guests. They are all acting contrary to the decrees of the emperor, saying that there is another king named Jesus. The people in the city officials were disturbed when they heard this, and after they had taken bail from Jason and the others, they let them go. That very night, the believers sent Paul and Silas off to Barocca, And when they had arrived, they went to the Jewish synagogue. These Jews were more receptive than those in Thessalonica, for they welcomed the message very eagerly and examined the scriptures every day to see whether these things were so. Many of them therefore believed, including not a few Greek women and men of high standing. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had learned that the word of God had been proclaimed by Paul in Barocca as well, they came there to stir up and incite the crowds. Then the believers immediately sent Paul away to the coast, but Silas and Timothy remained behind. Those who conducted Paul brought him as far as Athens, and after receiving instructions to have Silas and Timothy join him as soon as possible, they left him. He ends the New Testament reading. drawn from Psalm 73. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will will guide guide me with with your your counsel counsel and and afterwards afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and and afterwards afterwards receive receive me with with glory. Remember your promise of mercy to To Abraham Abraham and and his his children children forever. forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. And has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones. And lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. And sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory Glory to to the the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is is now, now, and and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Remember your your promise of mercy to to Abraham Abraham and his children children forever. So let us continue in prayer.
high and holy God, robed in majesty, Lord of heaven and earth, we pray that you will bring justice, faith and salvation to all peoples. And so, Lord, we pray for all those parts of the world where your name is not yet known. We pray for all nations who are struggling, Lord, with conflict, famine, disease. We pray for all those who are struggling because of extreme weather conditions, bringing before you especially those in Libya suffering from the devastating floods. Those two also rebuilding their, their lives and their livelihoods in places where there have been floods, fire and famine. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, hear our prayer. Our prayer. We give thanks to, all, to you for all those who have heard your word and believed. You chose us in Christ to be your people and to be the temple of your Holy Spirit. We pray that you will fill your church with vision and hope. And we pray today for your church throughout the world. We lift to you, especially at this time within our own diocese, the parish and people of Hyde St. George with St. Thomas, for their priest, Jeremy Bentliff, and their lay workers, Diane, David, Barbara, Susan, and Marjorie. Within the wider Anglican communion, we pray today for Adelaide in the Anglican Church of Australia. And we pray for our Melanesian brothers, especially at this time as they prepare for the great conference in October and for the election of their new leaders. We pray for this cathedral church, for all those who have visited it today, for whatever reason, May the time they have spent here in this sacred space have been an opportunity to encounter our loving and risen Lord. And we pray for all those who work here as staff or volunteers, remembering especially today our um, volunteer textile team and Jean Watson, their team leader. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your spirit enables us to cry, Abba, Father, affirms that we are fellow heirs with Christ and pleads for us in our weakness. And so we pray for all who are in need or distressed. We pray for the refugee, the asylum seeker, the homeless, the lonely, those who are grieving. We pray also for those who have asked for our prayers this day, for Kenneth and Elizabeth Booty, for George Stratford and Carl Ray. And in a moment of silence, we bring before you those who are specific, particularly on our hearts this evening. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. In the baptism and birth of Jesus, you have opened heaven to us and enabled us to share in your glory the joy of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit from before the world was made. And so we remember those we have lo loved and who have gone before us. Praying especially this day for the family and friends of Diana McConnell, 
Edna Deleuze, Paul Woodward, and Jim Maddox. May your whole church, living and departed, come to a joyful resurrection in your city of life, light, Lord, in your mercy. And so let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. God of all tribes and peoples and tongues, who called your servant John Coleridge Patterson to witness in life and death to the gospel of Christ amongst the peoples of Melanesia, grant us to hear your call to service and to respond trustfully and joyfully to Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so we say the words of the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.